Well, I've got just a short little look at some old books I was going by, and here they were, some real treasures. You know, when you open something up like this and you look at the woodcut in detail, uh, it's a treat. Now, here's some old woodcut here. That's nothing really fancy. Here's a slightly more advanced woodcut. What I look for is the stuff that's one step beyond this. It has more detail, more dimensionality to it, more tonal, uh, kind of a resonance, and kind of what I call zone energy. Here's what the book looks like. When you crack one of these things open, you see a good woodcut, you know right away, boy, let's take a close-up look at this. Again, this paper is 300 and some years old. The ink is 300 and some years old. They used basically wood to make it, and the ink doesn't smudge. The paper is not soiled. Now look right above the head. You see it has kind of a, almost a watermark effect. I want you to see this. You don't see this all the time in these old woodcuts. Well, anyway, let's get the close-up lens in here on this a little bit. And you can see, just like a newspaper today, you had a little bit of news when you opened the front page of these. And uh, some of you may be kind of versed in it better. You want to always look at the fingers and the toes and count them. Uh, if there's more or less than five, sometimes the woodcut artist is trying to tell you something. There's every single woodcut, every cut is there for a reason. Uh, there's nothing that you know just kind of happened. It's all painstakingly played out. You'll see sometimes angelic things just have... Uh, three or so fingers or toes or sometimes four. Now look at this. There's a little globe earth there with a cross on it and a moon, kind of a crescent, about 1735, a little before, maybe 1690, 1735 for this one. Not the best woodcut. Let's go ahead and go and look at to the end of it. Switch on over to the left and what do we see over here? Well, there's kind of a bell, a triangular bell with it is hitting to make some sound. I see a few little figurines. One of the angelic things looks almost like it has something sticking out of the tongue out of his uh, mouth, but that's not that, I don't believe. And uh, not much here. Not, not the best woodcut. Notice that's not the best shading. Uh, and let's go over. Well, we've seen that already. We've seen this go over to the right side in a minute. A little closer. There's that crescent shape. Later on, we're going to look at the eyes and see if one of the left or the right eye turns in on some of these by design. Uh, and then over to, well, no, I don't see anything here. We never want to just rush through this. Uh, again, I was only given less than an hour to, to go through quite a few books to get just these few little woodcuts here again. See at the top, there's a zero with two parentheses up there. There's another zero with two parentheses, but there's a, a higher quality woodcut. So you can kind of categorize these things mentally. Is that some crazy imagery? It sure is some crazy imagery. You can see all kinds of things in there, kind of like a Rorschach ink blot test almost. Well, I want to go ahead and travel just a little farther away from these and then get some better woodcuts. To go over to the left, got the horns coming out. We've seen that guy on rare maps before, rare earth maps with the horns, that guy sticking out. And what's he doing? Is somebody is kind of in an unnatural seating position. Go a little farther and... Huh. I don't know what they were trying to portray here. Is that a serpent or a snake wound around in there? Uh, now, here's just a clean woodcut. I know the very center there could be some imagery, but this is a super clean woodcut, about 310 years old. And let's grab another book here real quick. This is good. Okay, very good. Now, here, this one, boy, this is a rich, a rich page. I'm going to just take pictures of the top and bottom and everything. Somebody's holding a cross, somebody's holding a hand and putting a crown on somebody. Maybe they're trying to have some papal obeisance here. Some of this stuff I'm lost on. Now here, this is some pretty darn good. Now, this is magnified quite a bit. Oh, I think this is the installation of a pope back then. And, uh, and over to the left, there's probably something going to be going on over here. No, it just shows people in pictures. You can sometimes see if they're using a writing implement or a tool or something. It's fun to file that away mentally and get a picture. Now, what in the world do we have here? Somebody's having an angelic visitation. That could be anything. Angels talk to men quite a bit in the Bible. Uh, I don't know. What this another angelic visitation. I can't quite make that out. Maybe you can. If you've got a real big screen, these can be tough to see after a while, the last little detail. Okay. Again, this is, a, for detail, this is about a B minus, C plus for, for the woodcut art. 
All right, we'll just drink this in a little bit, take a little rich picture of history. I'm going to grab us another book here real quick, see if we can't get something going that way. Okay, got another book right here. And Okay, this is going to be very interesting. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and just give you a quick overview, and then we'll zoom on some specific areas uh, to look at a little bit more closely. All right, let's go over to the left side. Rather the right, oh, there's a earth or a fire dearth on the right side. Here's what it looks like a little more closely. Can't really make this out for sure. Quite often we have to almost eat our words when we come up to another book that gives more revelation to these things. And both hands are holding this. So they're trying to portray some kind of a message. Anything from the Holy Spirit coming on earth in the book of Acts to the earth burning up like a scroll or the new heavens and the new earth, the old one being burned up, could be anything here that they're portraying. Now, oh, the papal hat, but I do not see Dagon the fish god on that pope's hat there, the mitre. Oh, look at that face looking down at him. There's something going on there. Look, now this is some pretty good detail in the background. And there... The fingers are just supernatural, and the thumbs and all everything on these, just as natural as you could be. That's not going to be the case in some of these. We can find one. Okay. We'll just look here and see if we can see any little details. There's nothing really. Oh, that guy there with those wings in his hair. He's got something in his hand. Over on the left, he's got the wings in his top of his hair. Oh, he's got a little measuring device. He's going to get some kind of like Ptolemy a little bit. Or somebody else with the mathematics and the globe on top. Oh yeah, trying to get that globe earth business going. A little bit of Freemason, Ptolemy. No Copernicus, I don't think here. All right. Yeah, some of this stuff is fun just to look at for the sure uh, artwork's sake and the design imagery. Okay, here's what you look at. Now there's the crescent on top of the head. A little bit of angelic uh, leadership in this. Now let's get over to the right and see what they're up to over there. This is the best equipment I have. I wish I had some a better close-up lens, a little better camera, maybe next year. This is all we can do. Okay, it looks almost like big ears out of this thing. Oh, look Look at the hand. Does that hand look natural and normal and everything in there? Is that the way your thumb looks? No, of course not. The artist is trying to show you something, tell you something. In this case, certain angels have a twisted hand or a twisted thumb. Sometimes they're cut down to just three fingers. I don't know the, the interpretation yet. How's that hand look? Uh, is that the way your hand is when you put your hand down? <laughs> So just file every, every detail away, and it can make more sense. Now, I, tr I did something you're not supposed to do, Photography 101. I just turned it sideways like this, so you could get the full impact of some of these. You don't see a book this big quite often uh, with this much stuff, and it just hits you all at once. I know it's, you know, you may have to turn your monitor or whatever. I just said, look, let's just do it once for the people, the real affectionados back there. It can make people dizzy looking at them this way, but it really has a lot of impact to... To pull in, pull in all that detail at once. It was the only way I could capture the moment, so I just did it. See his eyes, how they're both straight ahead. One doesn't turn in. Start looking at that real close when you look at photos of people in the news, the media, who uh, are bad people, and see if just one eye doesn't turn in. And uh, don't ask. Now look at what's that thing up there on the left? A little pyramid device with a globe on the bottom, and uh, very interesting. How how would you grade the artwork out there? I guess. Oh, look at there's a square. Now this is getting us some real good woodcut art. This is representative of the woodcrafter's art right here. Look at the shadowing there, three hundred and ten years old. I got these out of a glass case. They looked as though they'd been. Oh, look look at this. What's that in their hands? And how are their fingers? 
Okay, we'll just go back again, look through here, pick out some different things. I sure appreciate the viewers out there who follow this stuff. I get some great comments. I wish I could talk, comment back to you folks. Got some good, helpful people, give a lot of encouragement, see things in here, and send me a, a message, some interpretation that they've stumbled across so on their woodcut journey. We sure appreciate any kind of a, a word, if anybody who knows anything, or even if you think you know something, or see something different than I just see, very easy to use. Two heads are better than one in this business. Oh boy, there's some good artwork. Yeah, I won't turn it sideways on you guys like this again, but at least we'll have one big, full shot we can scroll across like this that we couldn't do otherwise to get the whole thing. And see that shell at the bottom, like a seashell shape, that's linked to some occult imagery, as we'll see later on. Even National Geographic uh, makes mention of it way back in like 1920 or 30 or something there. Old, old graphics. Okay. Okay, that's it, folks. Looks like a phoenix bird upside down getting choked. Okay, thanks for stopping by. Take care. Best to all of you. Uh, don't have any prospects, any real good books uh, in the near future. But if I see some or hear about some, I'll get over and we'll take a look. Peace to all of you. Lord bless and goodbye for now.